Today on CPTV, Cal Poly has a new ASI president. Students will have to wait longer to climb the new rock wall. And find out how you can live in co-ed housing next year. Live from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, I'm Lindsay McLeod. And I'm Joseph Corral. You're watching CPTV. Two women were sexually assaulted last night on Hathaway near Cal Poly. This is the third reported assault in the last month, all involving male suspects attempting to remove women's underpants. The suspect is described as male with an olive skin complexion, about six feet tall, and dark hair with a buzz cut. UPD advised that anyone walking around at night pay close attention to their surroundings and never walk alone. Another Cal Poly fraternity is under investigation. Sigma Pi is being investigated by Student Life and Leadership for having a party where minors were served alcohol. Student Life and Leadership Director Stephen Lamb told the Mustang Daily Sigma Pi was placed on the cease and desist order to be consistent with the Delta Sigma Phi fraternity case DSP. DSP was placed on social probation just two weeks earlier for a party. The Sigma Pi party occurred at a Foothill property leased by some of the fraternity members. Calls placed to the fraternity leaders were not returned. Sigma Pi is under cease and desist until the results of the investigation come out. Katie Morrow is celebrating her victory after winning the ASI presidential election. 2012-2013 school year, with 3,907 votes, we have Katie Morrow. The social sciences junior was greeted with hugs by friends, family, and Cal Poly president Jeffrey Armstrong. After last year's record voter turnout of 37%, only 29% of Cal Poly students voted in the ASI elections this year. You know, I, I really feel like in races like this, anything can happen. And so, obviously I was, I was excited for it and really looking forward to it, and I had some amount of confidence, but at the end of the day, anything could have happened. Write-in candidate Naha challenged Morrow in the week leading up to the election, but Morrow was still able to win with 75% of the votes. She will finish her term as Chief of Staff before assuming the role of President in June. Cal Poly is nearing the middle of spring quarter and summer school registration is well underway. While many students attend summer school to complete or accelerate progress towards graduation, some find paying for the quarter a difficult task. I'm from Colorado, so I pay non-resident fees and they're really expensive and I would like to take summer school, but it's just it's too much. The cost of taking six units or less during the school year for undergraduate students averages to just over $176 for each unit. This year, fees are paid per unit for summer school and costing students $289 for every unit taken. The summer session has also been moved to self-support, which may be the reason behind the fee increase. This means the courses are funded entirely by student tuition fees. The rock climbing wall will remain closed for changes due to safety problems. One of the climbing routes was deemed unsafe to use in case of possible rope failure and must be rerouted. The current trail would have led the climber over concrete rather than the tar landing base under the rock. Students are excited for the opening and hope that the path will be fixed before the end of the quarter. I can see myself using it about like once a week. I'll come out here with the friends, be a fun time. Cal Poly officials say that other than fixing the route, they are also finishing safety training with Poly Escapes and getting the landing pad for the boulder secured. Undocumented students on the Cal Poly campus are now eligible to receive financial help from the state. Reporter Armando Garcia spoke to students and found out what it means to them. For the first time in California history, undocumented students, also known as AB 540 students, are applying for state-funded financial aid. This is thanks to the California Dream Act, which was signed by Governor Jerry Brown last fall. I think the most significant requirement is they, that they, the student needs to meet the AB 540 requirements. And that requires that the student have graduated from high school and have completed at least three years of the four, earn the high school diploma, and be in the, and be in the process or be willing to apply for uh, permanent residency. The DREAM Act going into effect is a huge victory for Marcos, a student who says that being undocumented means he's had to work twice as hard as documented students to achieve his academic dreams. So as AB 540, we have to work double, triple as someone who is a resident or a citizen. We have to work in the fields, we have to work stores, anywhere to get money to pay tuition and books. So it's, it's really hard uh, not being able to get any financial aid. If you need more information about the DREAM Act, contact Cal Poly Student Academic Services, CPTV, Armando Garcia. 
Now that students are able to apply for financial aid, they can put more time into their education rather than working to pay for it. San Luis Obispo residents have the opportunity to help design what the city will look like in 2035. City officials are updating the land use and circulation elements of the city's general plan. This helps officials know where new developments should be built, which areas should be preserved, and the ways people move around in the community. So we're looking forward to the year 2035. We're asking the community to come help us form that vision. We don't think the current vision is broken. We think it just needs to be updated and, and brought forward into the future. The community is invited to participate in an opinion survey and also attend the first public workshop for the project on May 16th. Visit their website, www.slow2035.org, for more information. Cal Poly students have new housing options for next year. Reporter Olivia Bickle gives us a look at some changes coming to Poly Canyon Village. Cal Poly students of different genders will have the option of living together in Poly Canyon Village next year. Students have asked for this in the past, and now University Housing is answering them. Next year will be the second year of the Open Gender Housing Pilot Program. This allows continuing students to choose their roommates regardless of their gender. University Housing says if students can pick the gender of their roommates off campus, they should be able to do the same on campus. I think it's awesome. I live with three guys and it's been like the best experience because um, sometimes you just, you're just more comfortable living with people of different genders. This option will be available in the four bedroom PCV apartments. Housing hopes this will better the living experience for some people on campus. It betters Cal Poly because students will be more satisfied with where they're living. And that, I mean, research shows that if you're satisfied with where you're living, you tend to do better academically and you're more connected socially on campus. The application for open gender housing consists of two short answer questions and an area to request your roommates. In order to live in a mixed gender apartment, all four roommates must request each other. The deadline to apply is Monday, April 30th, and you can find the application at residentiallife.calpoly.edu. So far, housing has received 12 applications, and they hope to receive more in the next three days. CPTV, Olivia Bickle. If you're interested in open gender housing but can't make Monday's deadline, contact Emily Sandoval. Her information is on the Residential Life website. Coming up on CPTV, your weekend weather forecast. A Cal Poly freshman has an unusual pet. And men are preparing to walk a mile in high heels. The first time watching this viral video about hot girls and their problems, and you know, I hot girls do have problems, and you know, it's. Welcome back to CPTV. Looks like we have a beautiful weather coming up this weekend. CPTV reporter Olivia Bickle has our five-day forecast. How's it look, Olivia? Thanks, guys. Well, we have a high-pressure system coming in, so it's going to bring a lot of warm weather this weekend. Um, unfortunately, there's going to be poor to fair surf conditions, so if you're planning on going to the beach, you might not want to bring your surfboard. There's only going to be two to three feet waves. Um, but today we have a high of 71 and tonight there's going to be a low around 46 and it's going to be a little breezier. This weekend we're going to have great weather. Um, highs around 75 to 77 so it's perfect to go to the beach, get outside. Um, and then continuing into the beginning of the week we're going to have highs around 70 and lows around 50 every night. That's it for your weather. Thanks guys. Thanks Olivia. Can't wait to get out there and enjoy the sun this weekend. I know. A Cal Poly freshman brought something unique to school with her after Christmas break. CPTV reporter Erica Turnland visited the vet clinic to see it take flight. Canyons when they leave for school, but animal science freshman Lindsay Benger has a different idea. Phoenix is a juvenile red tail hawk staying at the Cal Poly vet clinic. He was trapped from the wild earlier this year and has since been under Benger's care. Benger discovered falconry when she was volunteering at a wildlife research center in her hometown. An experienced falconer posted an ad looking for young eyes to help him train a wild bird. Since then, Benger has been infatuated with birds of prey. Just, I mean, this is a wild bird and he knew nothing about people before. He hated people at first and now I've formed this relationship to, with him where he'll actually fly to my hand. Because Phoenix is not fully trained, he stays clipped to Benger when he is out in the open. 
Oftentimes, Phoenix is seen baiting, which Benger assures us is completely normal. Lindsay hopes to start a raptor club on campus for students interested in falconry. She believes that falcons and other large birds on campus will benefit the agriculture departments because falcons are a natural way to rid the area of pests that are eating the feed meant for cow poly animals. She believes that these animals have something special. Tree to tree. And just that bond that you form with this wild animal is amazing. And the uniqueness of it. I mean, CBTV, Erica Turnland. You can catch Lindsay and Phoenix taking their daily walks through campus. Men in San Luis Obispo are walking a mile in high heels this weekend to raise awareness for an international movement. Walk a Mile in Her Shoes is a men's movement to raise awareness about sexual assault, gender violence, and rape by walking in women's shoes. The walk will kick off at 11.30 on Saturday in Mission Plaza and follow a one-mile loop through downtown. Men, women, and kids are all encouraged to support the cause. Um. This is the SARP Center's 10th annual event. Um, basically, sexual assault is really hard to talk about, and we know that, and we're trying to bring kind of a lighthearted approach to it. The event will also feature live music, a family fun fair, and a raffle. All proceeds from the walk will benefit the Sexual Assault Recovery and Prevention Center here in San Luis Obispo. For more information, visit walkamileslow.org. Cal Poly is hosting the California Student Sustainability Coalition Spring Convergence this weekend. The conference is designed to help students from throughout California learn about sustainable agriculture practices. Check-in starts at 8.30 a.m. Saturday on Mott Lawn. For more information, visit the CSSC website at www.sustainabilitycoalition.org. A lot of us have heard about tenure, but like you, we wanted to know more. Tenure is a complex process that mystifies average students. CPTV's Brandon Jones investigates. Um, again, I'm not sure I'd want to actually have that broadcast because I'm coming up for tenure, okay. so, so I'm a, a little bit nervous about saying that because it has a pretty big impact on the administration and whatnot. Some teachers might feel confined by the tenure process, but once achieving tenure, faculty are able to promote a freer exchange of ideas in the classroom and in their lines of research. The main advantage is just it comes with a little bit more security. Mm -hmm. uh, after about five or six years, at some point, you're awarded tenure and then um, it <laughs> becomes very difficult basically to be fired. And the other part is once you've proven that you can do what they need you to do, you should have the freedom to go off and try something crazy because who knows what neat things could come of it. Tenure is a lengthy process involving several steps, but how exactly does a professor get tenure at Poly? Here's how it works. This is a teacher in tenure track position. They're first evaluated by a department-wide committee. Then, their department head reviews the professor's work and credentials. A college-wide peer review committee does additional vetting. Then, the dean of the college submits a last evaluation. The final step in the process is a review by the provost and university president. If a professor fulfills all the requirements, he or she is granted tenure. The disadvantage to tenure is the what's often called the deadwood problem. Right? You get somebody who's basically given up, they're not really that productive anymore. They they'll come in, teach their classes and go home. But the faculty are the ones with the ideas, they're the ones coming up with new ways to teach people, they're the ones coming up with projects for students that make the student experience more uh, not only more enjoyable, but more practical and useful when they get out. It's apparent this process has clear pros and cons. This is the reason that the debate over tenure has been going on as long as the process itself. For CPTV, Brandon Jones. If you have your own thoughts about tenure, the university encourages writing the Office of Academic Personnel with your opinion. In this week's Culinary Corner, Lacey Buck tells us where you can find traditional English food in downtown San Luis Obispo. Slow Co. Pasty Co. is serving up authentic Cornish pasties with a California twist. A pasty is essentially an entire meal encased inside a soft, flaky crust. Pasties were a common food for miners in southern England as far back as the 12th century. The restaurant serves up traditional English and Irish pub fare as well as innovative modern pasties. The most popular pasty is the Augie and it's steak, onion, red potato, and rutabaga, all wrapped in a pastry dough. Slow Co. Pasty Co. prides itself on making all of its dishes from scratch. 
In addition to pasties, you can choose from several stews, soups, and salads. If you're still hungry after a hearty main course, you can order a dessert, such as the Nutella and strawberries pasty. Customers say that they come for the food, but stay to enjoy the pub environment. I like the atmosphere, the people who work here are really nice, the food was good, and I like the music. There are happy hour specials Sunday through Friday. The restaurant also features live Irish folk music several nights a week. Slow Pasty Co. is located at 1032 Choro Street. For CPTV, this is Lacey Buck. Slow Co. Pasty Company is open seven days a week and is available for takeout. Coming up next on CPTV, Cal Poly football player Asa Jackson is expecting to be drafted by the NFL. Students and community members gather to take back the night. And Emmy Award winning alum Laura Diaz visits Cal Poly. I don't care about wits, I just want to have fun. I thought it was really ridiculous, but it just makes me feel bad for all the people that like actually try and like actually can sing and produce music. Sports reporter Jeremy Jay is with us in the studio. All right, what's happening in sports this weekend, Jeremy? We've got a lot going on with football and NBA playoffs, but let's start it off with uh, one of the Cal Poly players who's looking at the NFL. Cornerback, uh, Cal Poly cornerback Asa Jackson wasn't selected last night in the first round of the NFL draft, but he says he expects to be drafted in the third or fourth round. While Jackson doesn't come from a big-name school, he has been very productive in his four years and is looking forward to playing for whatever team takes him. But I, I want to go with whoever wants me. Now, if they want me to come in and start, that's something that you know I'd love to do. Uh, if they want me to come in and just learn what uh, you know, learn under some guys, that's fine with me too. Jackson is willing to play for any team, but since he was a young boy, he's always hoped to play to play for the Raider Nation. I can't express to you how uh, how cool that would be to be able to stay local. I'd uh, be right there in Oakland, you know, with my grandma having season tickets and a lot of my family from the Bay Area. Uh, that's just absolutely a dream come true. Whether it is Oakland or not, this weekend is what Jackson has been waiting for and is excited to get to training camp and try to show off his skills. Without Jackson and the other seniors who completed their eligibility, head coach Tim Walsh is hoping to find some players to surprise him in tomorrow's spring football game. The game starts at 1 p.m. and will last for 100 plays. Jimmy Allen. Sports happening on campus this weekend. The Cal Poly baseball team takes on the Pacific Tigers in a three-game series. The Mustangs are fourth in the Big West Conference, while the Tigers are in last with a record of 1-8. A side note, Kyle Anderson, a senior pitcher for the Mustangs, was named to the Pitcher of the Year watch list. He is 6-1 on the year, and he is one of 51 pitchers in the nation on the list. All right, that's it for sports. So whether it's the NFL draft, NBA playoffs, or Cal Poly Baseball, everyone will have some kind of sports to choose from this weekend. Definitely. Thanks, Jeremy. Last night, Cal Poly students and San Luis Obispo residents joined together to fight against sexual assault. People gathered at the Creaky Tiki Island Grill for the annual Take Back the Night Rally. Take Back the Night is an international event created to empower survivors of sexual violence. Take Back the Night is the main event of Remember Week, which was created in honor of multiple female Cal Poly students who have gone missing. People come together to think about things that are affecting our community that you might not want to think about, but it's always good to stay aware and know that this happens and um, that you can prevent it by just being aware and educated. The evening included a candlelight vigil, speakers, and live music by Cal Poly students. Cal Poly alum Laura Diaz came to Cal Poly yesterday to speak to students in the journalism department. Diaz was the main anchor at KCBS in LA from 2002 to 2011. Over 20 students heard about Diaz's career path and got tips on how to make it in the business. She also shared advice about classes to take to enrich the Cal Poly degree. Coming up next on CPTV, reggae beats come to play in the UU Plaza free concert series. Host of the late, late night show, Craig Ferguson, headlined at the top. And a YouTube sensation is coming to Polly to promote his new movie. All right, welcome back to CPTV. Lindsay, did you happen to see any of the shows going on this week? I didn't, but fortunately, CPTV's Brandon Jones was there to cover them for us. Here's our entertainment report. Oh, you know I do. Cal Poly brought a lot of, actually, a lot of exciting entertainment to students this week. It's really fun. So, uh, 
see. Yesterday, rap sensation Jay Boog hit up our school with a blend of reggae music and witty rhymes. If you don't remember the book, he starred in the hit dance drama, You Got Served. He brought some fresh, funky beats to Polly all the way from Hawaii. And if you look closely enough, you can see some of these Polly kids actually putting their hands up, signaling they were having a very chill time. And last Tuesday, Late Late Show host and candid stand-up comic Craig Ferguson, great San Luis Obispo with his Scottish accent and well-toned muscles. Ferguson is known for having his off sense of humor English and a lack of self-censorship. So the crowd seemed positively stoked for a chance to experience Ferguson's cool demeanor and spicy attitude. An internet celebrity is coming to Cal Poly. YouTube sensation Kev Jumba will be here tonight at 7 p.m. He plans to promote his over, new movie, over Hang Loose, hours. as well as hang a little loose with his many fans in a loose Q&A. If you are a Kev Jumba fan and over the age of 13, then you're probably too old for this sort of thing. But I'm sure the relaxed atmosphere will accommodate anyone who knows just how to hang. And then tomorrow, Indian cinema gets a new twist with Bollywood Delicious. Put on by Blue 13 Dance Company, the self-proclaimed leader in the competitive field of American contemporary Indian dance ensemble. The show promises flashy clothes, moves, and colors. However, caution! Bollywood warns of adult content, so make sure you leave your secret college baby in the dorm where it belongs. And that about wraps up Hollywood for this week. I hope you guys have something exciting to look forward to. Thanks, Brandon. There's so many different things going on here. I know a variety to choose from. <laughs> All right, well, Paul Wasselman, better known as the Ripples Guy, is returning to campus for a special workshop next Wednesday. Wesselman works with the Cal Poly WOW program to train leaders and help new students transition to college. Wesselman's workshop, Get Better, Not Bitter, focuses on increasing your effectiveness and enjoyment of work and life. The workshop will be held in the Performing Arts Center at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Two San Luis Obispo High School students are getting national attention for their viral music video.